Hey, a pleasant good evening, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Boric, and we're here for the latest edition of the Ghostly Take. As I'm joined by a very special guest that covers the Phantoms for us from Flyers Nitty Gritty, Sam Wisemer. How you doing, Sam? I'm good. How are you? Good, uh, good. Always good when you get to beat a, a perennial Calder Cup contender, and instead of beat them, let's say pound them uh, this past weekend. So that's always a good way to come into the start of the week to get to do the Ghostly Take. But so let's start right there. Uh, we had a great weekend prior uh, beating Laval, beating Hartford. And we talked about it before the podcast. It seemed like you were set up for a tough game against Hershey at three and three. So that is what it is. And then we come back and beat a cup contender three to one and then seven to four, pulling seven goals out of who knows where. Uh, so yeah. uh, what were your thoughts on first Saturday's game we'll start with and how encouraging do you think it is that they really have played this well, obviously with guys starting to come back and now Fitzy's coming back as well. So, Well, like I said to you, you know, we chatted before we started recording. I am so super excited for Fitzy to be back. I have been waiting for this all season. Ryan Fitzgerald is one of those players that has energy when he comes on the ice. He makes plays that nobody else makes, you know, we have those players. We have we have Ryan Fitzgerald. We have Wade Allison. We have Tanner Lazinski. We have those players that have that energy on the ice that make a difference. And I think that going into this weekend's games, that is exactly what happened. It made that difference. Yeah, and I yeah, I completely agree with that. Once you bring back your guys that – and Tanner's not just the skill he has, but he's obviously one of those guys that brings the energy to the – rest of the group, not just in the locker room, but also on the ice. And those guys really help you when you're a team that has kind of been here instead of where we were in December and January, you've been more up and down that getting those guys back can help you to kind of be more balanced up rather than the up and down, which has been the case in the last uh, five games, winning four out of the five games with that only the loss to Hershey uh, smacked into the middle of there. But Obviously, for you, um, Tanner Lazinski is coming back, and he obviously is one of your favorite guys. So uh, I talked about the energy, but from the perspective of how big of a role since if do you think he's going to have, one, getting in if we do get in, and then two, since last year when we would have been a good ranked team, we unfortunately didn't have the playoff, what role he uh, would make in the playoffs at that point in your mind? I mean, this year, I think he, <clears throat> if, you know, because we are so freaking close. Um, the the team as a whole has to scratch and crawl their way in. And it's very doable. I mean, we have 17 games coming up in April, a total out of 30 days. Um, and then we have, what, three games this weekend and has how many ever other games. Um, so it's very doable because every game is worth two points right now. Um, Tanner alone, along with Wade, along with Ryan Fitzgerald, along with, you know, Clendenning, Garrett, Cal, all, all these guys that have, you, you know, t- taking Clendenning and Garrett and, and Cal out of the mix b- because they are leadership. When you mix in Wade and Ryan Fitzgerald and, and guys like Tanner, because they have the energy on the ice, I think that that kind of brings the the younger kids into the mix. And it's kind of like, oh, okay, like, you know, they they kind of ramp up the energy, and it's like, all right, you know, maybe we can do this, you know, and make the good passes, and you know, make the good choices on the ice, and not just make, you know, what are you thinking doing that? You're passing basically to nobody on the ice. And we've seen that this season. It's kind Multiple of like, what are you times. doing? <laughs> yeah. And I think because, I mean, this is really the thing with Tanner. I think both of us think this in the end. He'll be one of the at least bottom six guys eventually in the Flyers playing in the NHL, where when you have a guy that's really an NHL level forward, that's working his way back in the AHL for your playoff run. Obviously, that's going to give you great, much higher chance of success rate when a guy like that comes back into your fold 
Plus, also, Ryan Fitzgerald was at one time a very, pro- I think he was, yeah, Bruins organization, a guy that just never really we kept producing for Providence and then for whatever reason never really ended up getting a look. That, like you said, he has the unbalanced skill that you don't always see, like the unmatched, I should say, skill you don't always see at the AHL level of being able to get around the net. It's probably because of that. At one time, he was highly regarded, kind of fell into the spider webs a little bit, not for any re- fault of his own, but just because of whatever reason of not getting a chance wow. and then did great here. And now if he keeps doing that comes back this year, I mean, the flyers are kind of in a retool mode at the very least. You never know with him, he might eventually get a, a shot down the line as well. So this is a huge chance for him that he gets to come back this year and not have to wait to next season also. Well, and Ryan also comes from that, um, that hockey background family. He is Kevin Hayes cousin well Kevin and the late Jimmy Hayes' cousin um so he does come from a very deep hockey family and he makes those plays that nobody else makes and, and I said it to you before the podcast um you know he I remember him multiple times making plays that go go around the net and him just putting it in the net and making those goals and the only other person I can think of who makes goals or plays like that I mean, as of lately, was Oscar Lindblom, and Oscar did it out of pure luck. He even said that he's like, I, I did that wraparound goal, and it was pure luck. I wasn't expecting it to go in. Yeah, I mean, sometimes uh, that's just the name of the game. You got to get the right bounces, and we see that multitudes of times go against us, and then sometimes they will go uh, for us. Um, somebody though in the one side of things that we thought maybe eventually would come back down with the Phantoms got claimed by the Ducks. Uh, What do you, do you think that has a huge effect on the team? Uh, Because Mayu did play a good role for the Phantoms, but hasn't been down there for a while. So they're not used to playing with them anymore. But like, what do you think the whole effect is there? Jerry Mayu hasn't been there since December and that's when we really started playing shorthanded. So I don't think it really would have had that big of an effect. Um, him coming back. It, I don't, I don't really think like, y- you know, and, and you and I both know because we both sit in press conferences with Lappy. He is very big on his structure in Lehigh Valley. And I, I think that plays a very big role in it. Yeah, yeah, I think. Sorry, and he doesn't want, you know, he he talked about Yorkie and Frost coming back and how they need to adapt to the structure and you know, and even Cam York has has said he's like it's it's hard to come back from the NHL and have to basically slow your speed down. Yeah, yeah, because they play a little bit more. I don't want to say conservative, but uh, controlled pace. Uh, at the with the phantoms at times so uh that that does that is a very good point somebody that we have to obviously bring in because you talked about playing shorthanded one guy that has significantly helped our phantoms this year due to the fact of them playing shorthanded is a former reading royal just like max wilman significantly helped them last year uh in hayden hodgson who unlike max wilman adds one other dimension to it as well which is if you piss him off, you might want to get the hell out of the way. <laughs> get the hell out yeah. of the way. Yeah. So, um, um, what do you think of how just good he's been? He has, well, let's see here, 18 goals, one assist, 29 points. Yeah, he's leading the team in goals. I think Hayden has been a wonderful addition to the team. Um, it needs to calm his attitude down just, just a smidge, but uh, I, I mean, because it's getting him suspended. So, but. Um, I think he's been wonderful. I I don't really have anything bad to say about him. I think he's a yeah. great player. He knows, you know, he knows how to make the plays. He knows how to get the puck in the net. Yeah, and that's what he did. I was just so surprised how quickly he um, adjusted from the ECHL to being able to just hop in and play the same physical demanding while being able to produce at the same time game at the AHL level, because you obviously see a lot of guys come back and forth, like we had Dayo um, earlier in the year that played a game or two with us, that don't really stick in the AHL because they can't find their stride there. Where he found it, like it was a couple games, I feel like, into the season, and you started seeing him 
start to get his skating speed up, kind of keep up with the pace of the play there. And that was what, to me, was the most pleasant surprise because I always, from watching him with Redding, which was now two years ago because they didn't play last season, uh, like they, uh, he was a uh, guy that you thought had a chance to, to progress, but it's just how quickly he made that immediate impact and is your goal-scoring leader this year. That's what is a pleasant surprise to me from that aspect, which is great for the Phantoms because those guys are obviously great to have in playoff runs. You want to have the Garrett Wilsons of the world. You want to have the Hayden Hodgsons of the world that are able to not just produce, but also battle anybody and rough anybody up whenever they need to do so. Yeah, and you can kind of tell when Hayden's getting a little bit chippy because when you sit there and you watch these guys enough as I do, I'm like, I, I, I can already foresee it coming because Hayden starts to get a little bit cranky and you can just tell by his facial expressions. And I'm just like, I look around everybody and I, I tell my, my, my roommates, I'm like, he's about to drop his gloves. No, he's not going to do it this time. I'm like, yes, he is. No, he's not. I'm like, yeah, he is. Five seconds later, gloves come off and he just starts right hooking. I'm like, <laughs> sorry, I'm yeah. usually right. <laughs> No, yeah, I mean, I think, I, I don't, I think with Hodgson, it's about, like you said, keeping it tempered, but at the same time, he's such a good thinker of the game that it reminds me a bit of the bad, of the, the greatness minor league version of kind of how Wilson is in the NHL, where it's like, you want to control him, but at the same time, you can't, because that's going to then take away from how great he is, because that personality is a big part of, why he is who he is. So it's like a balancing act as a head coach, but those guys are probably some of the hardest guys to coach because you have to try to restrain them a bit, but also let them still be them so they can be as well, successful. And even, you know, Lappy has said, he's like, I don't want my guys to go out there and fight all the time, but he's like, I also don't want them to, you know, lack of terms to be pansies. Yeah. Exactly, which is which is not really to me. That's not even considered. I think in terms of the hockey community, that's one of the lighter things uh, you would probably hear people use as a word to describe uh, people. Um, but when it comes to our team, something I really wanted to ask you about is the defense because it's been inconsistent. That's uh, so. What do you think is the best one six person set? And two, uh, who do you think is really good, at, other than Adam Glendening, obviously, and Zamul has been pretty sharp, Wiley we know. But, like, other than, like, the big three, do you have, like, an underlining sleeper guy that you think um, can kind of come in and provide an extra spark to this team, other than, like, kind of that big three of Glendening, Zamul, and um, obviously Wyatt Wiley since coming back from injury? Uh, Honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna say here be honest. I mean, besides Clendenning, Zamula, and and Wiley, I really don't think that there are any. Um, because of it being so inconsistent this year, you know, with with injuries, it just it's been suffering. And and Wiley really hasn't had a steady partner. No, yeah, exactly. he did. He did it first, and that was Cam York. That that line of York and Wiley was was fire. I mean that that was that was your first line, and you know York got called up, and Wiley lost his partner, and he hasn't had a steady partner. So you gotta. At times, I kind of feel bad for Wyatt because he hasn't had that steady partner. But then again, in the AHL, you don't have that steady partner. Yeah, usually you don't because of how fluctuating, obviously, everything is with our rosters. Somebody that also I think has been screwed over because from watching him play with about, a, let's talk about a carousel of, of different defensemen playing with uh, him. Somebody that I liked last year that this year has had more bumps is Hogberg. And I think part of that goes with if you can't find consistency, you you don't expect to find it always at the AHL because of, like you said, the fluctuating, but still, it still exists in human nature. You want to kind of be able to find a tendency with somebody. And if you're just in this continuous carousel of different partners, it is going to kind of affect your overall output at the end because you never really were able to find a good tendencies with 
anybody and kind of know what their takes are and what their things are that they're not good at, what they when they take chances, when they don't take. But that's why I think it's affected a guy lately that I think has been better was very held back and reserved at the beginning of the year when I was Zach, who's been better. And I would say the last six games uh, or something like that uh, it, it, to put a label on. Yeah. So if that can continue having a guy that can skate like him, um, obviously isn't the biggest guy, so you're not going to get much physical play out of a guy that's five, nine like him. But uh, if he can block some shots and use his skating speed effectively, like he has in the last six, he would be, I don't know if a, a sleeper might be generous, but he would be like a guy that's a nice extra guy that might show up more during this downstretch like he's been doing lately. Cause the other thing about him is he's still only 22 years old. So uh, you got him from the Bruins organization, but you got him at still a significantly young age. So he's still obviously no, really we, growing. We also have to think about the guys that are going to be coming in next season. We've got, you know, I mean, I talked to Jamie today. We've got Bobby Brink. That's going to be signed. We've got Noah Cates coming in. Um, Ronnie Atard. Ronnie is hard. Like we've, we've got these kids that are coming in and if not this year, the Phantoms are going, I mean, I'm excited to see Brink play. Even like, O'Brien, if they sign him, will be good in the AHL. We'll see what happens at the NHL level for Jay as he continues to develop, but I think he'll be good at the AHL level. Though. I mean, so, yeah. the, these, these kids are going to come in and they're going to take this by storm and I'm excited for it. Yeah, I agree. That's what I think is why even if this season's up and down, even if you fight in and don't necessarily fully get there in the end, that part I really 100% agree on that it's going to end with promise of the future because you have all those guys, like you said, plus others that we didn't name that are potentials to be signed as well. And Fletcher mentioned it at the press conference, undrafted college free agents that they kind of have their eyes out for that they could be able to grab as well, like the Matt Reeds of the world or something like that. So I you just, have different options there. I just really want Chuck to, you know, draft this kid by the name of Connor Bedard. <laughs> when oh, Connor yeah. is ready to be drafted. Yeah. Yeah, if that, yeah well, 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 that way we'll have to have the organization stop living in La La Land and realize that rebuilding is a better strategy uh which i don't necessarily see for seeing <laughs> my 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 guy best friend um his name's jason he said to me today he's like this is the rebuildiest rebuild if i've ever seen one and i said it's not a rebuild it's a retool and it's um uh retool you into thinking that we're going to be good for the first 10 games of the season <laughs> <laughs> which i don't even like the, the Flyers for me, uh, and then we'll go back to the fans. This is the Phantoms podcast, but that that's really what it, like, I think they're going to have guys move in because Lappy, I think, has really got better as the season went on and not just learning how to develop guys and talk to talk, but also learn to strategically coach, which obviously is something that comes with learning. Uh, so uh, I think as time goes on, he'll continue to put guys in better spots where, but at the same time, the Flyers then have to put them in. The, so just because they were set straight in the AHL level, they then have to be put in the right spot at the NHL level. And we've obviously haven't seen that be the case for everybody that's gotten their opportunities up there. And that to me is also why it's kind of delusional to think that you're going to recover that quickly. Not just because you don't necessarily have the guys ready yet to recover that quickly or on your roster yet, if you're going to get other guys, but two, like you haven't developed guys to the degree of how good other teams have. So that both of those two things put together is not a good recipe for recovering quickly. And I'm just kind of tired, of, not tired, but just like, yeah, tired of people getting on lappy about this season when I'm sorry, but if you haven't watched a game this season at all of the Phantoms, you don't really have a right to critique his coaching. Yeah, I agree with that, 100%. So, if you haven't watched a game this season, you don't know the circumstances that he's been dealt. Is it completely his fault? No, it is not completely his fault. Does he have some of the blame? Yes, he is a first-year head coach. He has never been a head coach before. So, yes, he is 
partly to blame. But the other part of it is COVID, call-ups, injury after injury after injury. That has been the season of the fans. Especially the goaltending. You, you had the different goaltending characters. Yeah, Mel Coffin for a bit. So. We had like eight goaltenders this year. Uh, let me see. We've had a lot. Yeah, six. I just counted it. It hasn't listed as six because Gilly's played one game, Garrett played four, Sam's played five, Hatch 13, Kirill's eight, and Sandy's 34, with the which is way above, obviously, everybody else. Yeah. Um, so we've we've had a lot, and it's not it's not Lappy's fault for that. No, this that's is, nobody's fault. <laughs> you can't do anything is, about the. This is the name of the game in the AHL. You sign guys to PTO contracts to see how they're going to work out. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of surprised they didn't sign Metcalf to a contract because he did really well. That I was too. I, I was actually, especially when, um, because it takes a little bit sometimes from listening to the radio broadcast since I usually watch on the HL TV from where I'm located. Only a couple games actually come on our airwave. But, um, when Bob says it usually takes Bob a little bit to commit to saying, I think we should keep somebody around. He's not somebody that usually jumps off that boat quickly. Where with Garrett, he even said that in, I think it was the last game he played, his fourth game. And then we kind of just never kept him around. And uh, to me, I don't really understand why, because he played for Utah, I believe, if I remember correctly. The so Utah Utah Grizzlies. And yeah, the Grizzlies. And he played really well in the ECHL and played well for us. Uh, it didn't really make much sense because he's also a guy that's still a fairly young uh, netminder in, at the age of 26 that it would have made sense to keep him around to continue to maybe even grow him into being a guy that just had even better depth as a great third stringer behind uh, Felix or Sammy, depending who's down next year, or Sammy and whoever. Uh, so Because we don't know how the goaltending is going to be next year, who the backup for the Flyers are going to be. But Either way, it's always good to have that depth. Um, but I guess maybe Nagel, they just figured Nagel coming back, they're gonna, that's the reason why would be my guess. And, um, you know, I talked about this on, on my Canes podcast yesterday. Um, their, their system, which is rare for the Hurricanes organization, has a ton of goaltending depth. Mm -hmm. they're in the same position that we were in last year where they're in a goalie log jam. And guess who's going to get the brunt of that again this year? Probably Alex. Yeah. He's probably, I mean, I could see him being signed to another year because they're probably going to go to the Calder cup because of him. But um, yeah, I mean, but now we're in a jam because Arison's injured. We don't know what's going on with him. Sandy's more than likely going to be the backup next year. Usi, his contract's up. I foresee them sending him to the KHL. Like, resign. Or just letting him play in Reading for more time. Year. Yeah. Who, who knows what's going to go on with his contract? And. Like what, what? 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 What are we gonna do? Because we don't have any more goalies, and I don't foresee Fedotov coming over unless he's guaranteed, to, you know, to see NHL ice time. Yeah, which I do think you could give him because Felix could start again with the Phantoms, and then if Ivan struggles, you just because you you just promised to give him NHL ice time. You didn't say if you suck, we're just going to continuously keep you up. So, like, if he does bad, then you can send him down and do the swap. And uh, I think if he comes over, he definitely would be the favorite to be the backup just because you're coming from a men's league into a men's league where obviously the AHL is more of a – it's a men's league in some aspects with the Cal Rileys, the Adam Johnsons, the uh, Garrett Wilsons, but it's a development league in a sense where the KHL is, one, is the second-ranked league in the entire world. So it's a – I would say the, the big thing with him is I talked to Jamie on the phone. Will he want to come over and leave his family in Russia yes, at a time like this? Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's the bigger um, 
thing for me when it comes to Ivan Fedotov. I I think it's more where does he stand with his family and everything, or is he going to be able to bring, like, would he just bring everybody over here and say, let's just get the heck out of here? Um, or like, wh- where does he kind of stand on all that? And that's kind of what what you have to see when it comes to him, in my opinion. I mean, I think for me, I think. Sorry, I had to grab my charger. Oh, um, good. I think for me, if I were Chuck Fletcher, and obviously, you know, he made it very obvious today by not getting rid of Martin Jones, that his eyes are very much on the AHL team. And he is keeping an eye on the Phantoms. Um, and he's at those games. He comes to Allentown quite often, actually. Um, yeah, that I will give him credit for. I definitely will give Chuck credit for being present at AHL because you you never see a GM at their AHL team, and he's there quite often. Um, and he mentioned in a press conference, you rarely see GMs mention their AHL team in a presser about a de- especially about a trade deadline. Oh, uh, when it comes, you're talking about a lot yeah. of other stuff before that usually crosses your mind. So to me, I think it's time for everybody not to not pay attention to the Flyers because the Flyers it's more important, obviously, but. Switch your gears to the Phantoms for right now because we are very close. We are making a push for the playoffs. And I think Chuck made it very obvious. Um, But getting back to the draft during the offseason this year, I think Chuck needs to make a push and get a goalie. In the draft? Hmm. Yes. So you want to trade Carter Hart then for assets? No, I don't want to trade Carter. Oh, okay. I don't want to, I, in the draft class, like when we're drafting guys, get a goalie. Okay, not in, not in the first round. You mean just in general? Yeah, just in general. Get a goalie. Okay, okay, gotcha. Because right okay, now, that makes sense. Right now, we don't have goalies to pick from anymore. Yeah, your depth kind of windled away with the fact that Kirill got set back from hip surgery. Uh, Samuel has never had an injury history in Sweden, and then had got bit by the injury bug here all of a sudden. So hopefully that goes away next year. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what happened with him. I think it's, I think it's just a really bad, like groin injury and just keeps re-injuring. Um, which those are some of the most nagging injuries. I just know from playing baseball, even like when you get yeah. something with your groin, if you try to keep doing stuff, it doesn't, it definitely takes a while. Yeah. So, you know, and he's he's great when he's in net. I, I love watching Arison in net. He's great. Um, oh, he's so fundamental. His fundamentals are off the charts with how he makes a save that it would take most guys a glove save to make it. He gets it in the chest just because of how quick he slides side to side. But, he's su- and he's super methodical when he does it. So. Oh, yeah. I, I love watching goalies. It's, it's my favorite. I part. actually think he's our best before the season. I still really like Felix. I mean, let me preface the state, statement by saying I still think Sanchez could be a, ba- a very good backup in the NHL. But when I went to ranking the guys, I thought he was, in terms of peak potential, above Felix. Then it was Felix, and then Kirill was down down somewhere. And then uh, Ivan was obviously being he's successful in the KHL, was probably above everybody, but that's if he ever comes over. So, mm-hmm. like, that's kind of how I – had it there, and then you have a Tomic who also plays in Czech Republic, but I don't necessarily see him ever coming over for the Flyers. He'll probably come over for some other team because what? Where is he? If he's looking at the team, he's probably looking. What the heck do I fit in here? So I don't necessarily oh, yeah, see we're, him. Play. We're definitely gonna have to, you know, just wait and see. <laughs> yeah. Did you have though, um, in terms of? pick what would be since we kind of went on it and obviously this guy for a little bit were at least most likely maybe not the first guy but our second or a third round pick will at least play with the phantoms for a bit hopefully and maybe our first round well who would be your projection position wise and if you had a specific guy that you would say in the top likely seven at the very least we're going to be in if not five from the lottery uh where the who the flyers should focus on whether it's just a position or what you think the actual guy should be position this year for for the draft class 
Yeah. Um, defense. Defense. Yeah, defense to me depends on who's there, just because with our luck, we'll pick Juracek, who has injuries, and then he'll keep getting injured like Ryan Ellis. And then I'll go, okay, great. So now we have a young version of Ryan Ellis, who's probably better than Ryan Ellis if he could stay healthy. The problem is, <laughs> where, where that's what with me, with the Flyers at this point, with our crap injury luck, I don't want to really pick somebody that has that coming off of a major lower body injury. But otherwise, I agree. If we can get um, Nemec or some of the other defensemen um, on the board, you can. De- I think we should definitely do it. Or at the draft, if you somehow trade somebody for the rights of a first-round pick, uh, Seamus Casey's a very good offensive defenseman that's in this uh, draft. So there's, there's different levels you can go with it. So I agree that defense should be it. I also agree that – I also or no, don't agree, but think Fletcher should be looking to – big trades during the NHL entry draft when it comes to you brought in the asset of the 24 first round pick, you might be able to even use that this year to move up and get that. So if there's guys that are there, you should be aggressive with guys that you think are really going to help the team. Because if you're trying to do, even though I don't think they're going to recover as quickly as they think they are, if you're trying to do that, you got to make moves like that. You can't sit on your hands and go, well, I can't do that because then you're kind of just playing it too conservative and you're not really talking to, or walking yeah. the walk of the talk that you're and playing. And not for anything, but not not just any type of defenseman, but we need a right-handed defenseman. Yeah, that's what Nemec and Casey, Nemec and Casey are both. That's why I brought those two up, but the other guy I had in my head was left-handed, so I just didn't bother yeah. to, to mention. <laughs> um, we did pick, though, I forgot. We have to remember, we actually picked a really good goalie in last year's draft, which slipped my mind until I looked at our prospect. Uh, we picked that Kozolo, or that ah, Kolosov. There we go. <laughs> Alexi Kolosov, um, who's played very good in the K this year at only 20 in the third round um, with Dynamo. So they did get – now, I don't know how quickly he'll come – he's not going to – I don't think he'll come over at 21, but uh, you have another good guy developing over there that – I guess it shows the Flyers know what they're doing, at least when it comes to, well, goaltending, they've been good lately, but when it comes to rushing goaltenders, they picked Fedotov years ago, and now they picked Kozlov, who almost seems like what Fedotov was at a young age, where it's like, oh, this kid's playing this good at a young age, imagine what he'll do at 23. Yeah. And then you kind of keep going from there. So it'll be interesting to see how he continues to develop and how quickly the Flyers want to, one, make him come over, and two, uh, how quickly they think he will be ready for being this like one B say for the Phantoms, like someone that platoons regularly and they and have something know, going. I know Sam Carcidi had said yesterday um, or the other day that Tyson Forrester was sent back to the OHL. Obviously we all know that mm. um, he's going to finish the Barry season out and then he's going to come back to Allentown. And he's going to finish okay. the season here out in Allentown. Um, so, apologize. My dog's like, <laughs> um, so Tyson's going to come back and finish the season out here in Allentown as well. Um, that's what Sam made it seem like. And then, um, you know, next year, I'm all for Zade Wisdom. Oh, yes, 100%. He was so good wait. last year. Yeah, he was so good. And then this year, um, he, he was, he's was he been good in the juniors. And I think it's just – he's another guy that some people I just never respond to in fan groups just because of how quick people are to go from positive last year to – where he's working his way back from a major injury. Yeah. It's obviously you're not going to hop back. It doesn't matter if you're in the juniors. You're still not going to hop right back on the ice and be the same dude you were before that immediately. Like – we saw Crosby even this year. He got re- going again quickly, but it was like a three-game stretch before he went, okay, I'm Sid again, and he's one of the best players, as much as I hate to say it, of our entire life. So when it takes those guys a few games to get going, obviously it takes the normal uh, run-of-the-mill good NHL or AHL-level players or um, OHL-level players to get going as well. So that that's always just the way I look at um that aspect. Somebody that's always interesting to me for the Phantoms, though, just because I always find it interesting how we play him 
sometimes up and down the lineup and don't always play him enough at the AHL, which is why when I talked to you the one time about him, I thought he should have just stayed at the NHL, is Ratcliffe because I feel like the Phantoms play him well one game, then they put him in a different spot the next game, then they play him well the next game, and then they kind of put him in a different role the next game. Where with the NHL, they just it seemed like Yo, even though I don't think Yo should be the coach next year, but it seems like Yo just said, do you be the physical drive to the net guy that I can do? Where with the Phantom, just seems like like we kind of play like we said earlier that not conservative, but like a little bit slower, turn down pace. That doesn't really fit with Isaac Rackley. No, and I think Isaac should play more minutes on like, you know, the first or second line because he has proven himself. And, you know, some of these kids, they don't really play well on an AHL team. They don't really develop well at the AHL. But then you throw them into the mix in the NHL and it's like, where did it come from? And Isaac Ratcliffe was one of those guys. Nobody expected him to do what he did at the NHL level. And I'm just, I, I was one of them. I, I sat there and I was like, Isaac, why can't you do this with the Phantoms? Like, <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's just exactly what you said. And Lappy might adjust his more, like John Hines was not as aggressive as he is in um, Nashville in terms of offense when he was with the Devils. So like, like different coaches adjust over time and change their system. I'm sure Lappy won't be as slow down the pace. That's just while he's learning how to become a coach because he'll realize with guys like Ratcliffe, even with guys like um, obviously Hodgson, who plays with that big physical demeanor, Tana Luzinski's a great skater. You don't always want to slow down the pace because that'll bite you in the butt sometimes. We're keeping it going at the max level sometimes is what gives those guys the ultimate edge. So I think over time, we're yeah. just there, but I do think Ratcliffe, I would be shocked if he's not on the Flyers roster to start next year, unless if we make stupid moves that are a la Vinny LeCavalier. Like, like, unless if we make those moves where it makes no sense we just sign somebody to a five-year deal for like seven mil a year and you're sitting there going, yeah, this is a move that, like, I don't know, the uh, Kings that are in the playoffs this year that are going to keep – like, this is a move that a team that is not us that is trying to recover should be making. And that's really um, what worries me about hurting our Phantoms guys is us being stupid in the offseason with thinking we're ahead of the tide, which then, in contrast, hurts our guys' development because they don't get the menace they should get at the NHL level – that they prove themselves they should get because you add somebody you don't even need because you're not at that point of where you're at as a team yet. So, yeah, no, I agree. But I think we uh, pretty much uh, have uh, made a pretty good wrap up here uh, in terms of closing thoughts. I think uh, a perfect ones are to talk about who we think our stars of the team have been this season, who we think the team MVP has been on offense, defense, goaltending is obvious. Uh, but um, we can go through those. So I'll, I'll turn it over to you for the forward core. Who do you think in the forward core we'll start with have been the MVPs of the team this season? Forwards? Um, well, I got to go with Garrett Wilson. <laughs> I figured. <yeah. laughs> I'm always, I'm always going to go with Garrett Wilson. No. <laughs> um, forwards? Hmm. You know, I mean, we've got so many uh, these guys. Um, one, I like them all. <laughs> there's, there's I would say one, there's, there's not one I'm, that really's had a bad performance. I mean, here and there, and you don't have a lot that are. Hayden Hodgson. I mean, he's put an yeah, awesome performance. Yeah. <laughs> Mine, I think, would just be he's never like he's still been at a ridiculous level as the captain of the team. I would just say for me, just because he continues to perform, even when we had all the injuries, like you were saying, and he wasn't surrounded by the best lineup. Cal continued to show up and perform every night. So I would say. Uh, he, he would be my guy that I would give the nod to there. But, I mean, Hodgson, Wilson, 
like all those guys have been playing very good. And then even guys who talked about Strom even this year in a bottom line role has developed into filling out that role that Connor Bunneman used to play that is now with the Florida Panthers and stuff. And I've got to say, I got to give props to um, Cal O'Reilly has just been on a tear lately. Yeah. Um, just out of nowhere, been on a tear lately. I, I remember when he, you know, has was on a tear of multiple goals and Tony and I were in a, um, you know, a good friend of, of ours in the press box, Tony Androkaitis, um, had said, you know, in the press conference, you know, what, what's your goal with all of these goals? And he's just like, Cal was like, I don't know, maybe I think, I, I think I need to shoot more. Dude, it's <laughs> working. It's working, so keep doing it. <laughs> that's one of the guys that, it's funny, because that's a guy that's going to be in the AHL Hall of Fame that's one of the best playmakers of all time in what, the 16th year of his, like the 15th year of his career going, oh, I think I need to shoot more now. And it's funny because he's been our captain now. This is his third season. And, you know, unfortunately, he's probably going to leave after this season. Um, I hope not, but I do agree with you. Yeah. I hope not either because I hold him in really high regard. And losing G was enough this year. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't need to lose two captains for our organization in the same way. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but you can see every time, like, one of the kids – gets put in the penalty box like Hayden or you know god forbid Garrett or Wyatt or you know one of these guys gets put in the penalty box you can see him head over and he talks to the the ref and he's like yeah yeah I know I know he did it but really like and then he just shakes his head like these freaking kids (laughs) (laughs) like like he is truly the dad of the team (laughs) no yeah he 100 percent I mean that's why I love the, that's what I think the Phantoms sometimes like those veterans that you brought in, obviously the Glenn Dennings, those are the money veterans. What I think we clog ourselves sometimes with too much is the Adam Johnsons of the world, which then hurts putting guys that are young that deserve more playing time. I said this before we started the podcast uh, in the right spots, because you have a guy that again, isn't a bad AHL player, but he is what he is. He's just a fast skater that, gets to the battles. He doesn't always win them, but that'll get to the boards quicker than others. Uh, And like those guys are what they are. So like, to me, you shouldn't be playing those guys over Linus Sandin, for example, who's very good on both ends when extremely healthy, obviously he's been banged up this year, but when he's actually able to get into a routine, he's a very solid uh, two-way guy. Adam Johnson is more just a speed guy that because of his speed plays okay defensively, but I wouldn't say he's like a shutdown. Uh, forward by any stretch on defense so that the that's what to me has always been the throw off we get all these great veterans that i love and then you mix in those guys that i'm like why aren't we just letting this guy play more <laughs> like, yeah. like that that's kind of what what it is that that always has uh confused me a little bit with um the way we do things but uh, you, we both said it, Cal O'Reilly, you threw it, Hayden Hodgson and Garrett. Those definitely would be the guys for the forward uh, court. For the defense, uh, I think for me, because Adam Glendening is obvious, everybody just kind of expects him to be a good passing offense defenseman each year. I really like what Eager Zamula was able to do this year to keep progressing and moving yeah. up because, again, consistency, he hasn't had it because we've had so many guys fluctuating in terms of his line mates either, and he's still been able to perform with whoever they put him out there with. Yes, Zamula is has definitely come a long way with his development this year, and I'm very, very happy with him. Yeah, I also think uh, he's a guy – that the Flyers better not sign another left-handed veteran defenseman like Keith Yandel because he should be on the third line next year to start the season. Yeah, I I think um, you know if him and Wiley keep working over the summer, um, they I mean Wiley almost made the roster this year, so. Yeah, and I'm surprised he didn't get a chance with some of the ways that we call people up this year when I thought it would have made more sense to logistically call up a righty. And well, then they went, oh, well, let's <laughs> York, York already had that NHL experience. So I said, No, I mean, yeah, I'm not talking about Cam. I was talking about, didn't we call up? I don't think he played, but didn't we call up Z for a period of time earlier this 
year when one of our lefties got I, think, it. I forget. Yeah, it was like one or two games that he got called. Yeah. Up and went back. Where that was kind of the time I remember, which I don't think Wiley would have played, but it's just to me, the obviously the fans are competing for a playoff spot, but like if something happened where, which hopefully doesn't, but like they didn't get in in those extra days in the season, the pairing to close out the season, but they're not going to do it because the Flyers are too scared of bench and Keith Handel, should honestly be from the fact that they played together some of the age out of me. I texted this to my friend. I would give Wiley a chance, and I would give Zamula a chance if the Phantom didn't make the playoffs at the end of the season to get some games. But they're not going to do that because they're too scared to bench Keith Handel. When, like, I also messaged him, unless it's Phil, I said this is a joke, obviously, but unless it's Phil Kessel gets hit by a Mack truck and he comes, Keith Yandel ain't having that record. <laughs> so, like, like yeah, that's the other side of it. I understand you want to honor the guy and everything, but, like, you already did. The Flyers did a good job, I thought, with the video they put up there for him. He's not even having a good season, and they still paid tribute to him uh, for it and everything. Uh, what, what more does he want? <laughs> like, I don't think there's much more you can give Yondo at this point where eventually I think you got to just sit him down and say, you are like, this is kind of the end of the road uh, for, for you. And this guy is going to, unless if, again, he gets injured out of nowhere, this guy is going to break your record anyway. We need to do what's best for our team. And I think, unfortunately, Fletcher, it seems, promised Yandel something that he's now, that now kind of screwed him over. Otherwise, I don't think he would still be in the lineup. So. Yeah, no, I agree. There, well, there is, there is no more for for Yandel. <laughs> yeah, there's not, and that's why I'm not surprised we didn't get anything for him because I mean, who would have? The only way you would trade him for Keith Yandel is if you wanted a basically player coach, if you wanted a guy in your locker room that has the right mindset and the right qualities, but isn't really going to give you much on the ice anymore. So. Exactly. But. Last, we'll wrap up with, I think, the most obvious. I would say when it comes to goaltending, both of our keys to the goaltending success this year is probably Felix Sandstrom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're really And then good. Pat played great in 13 games, so let's shout out Pat, too. But Yeah. Patty Nice. Felix just played, 30. Felix just played 34 games, and I highly doubt they wanted that to happen, being he came off an injury late last year, worked his way back the end of last season. They're probably going, let's ease him this season into being into a starting role and then everything happens. I mean, his, his confidence, <laughs> his confidence has just boomed out of nowhere and yeah. I'm all for it. Like I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed watching Felix Sandstrom this year. He has been an absolute pleasure to watch grow. Yeah. And then he's also been, He's been better than his stats, too, because he's one of the guys that fits perfectly into the article like Chris Bundy had a couple weeks ago when he interviewed coaches that said the, we still use the eye test as the utmost, and then we use the analytics and the um, the uh, lot, stats as supplementary. He's a lot like Carter Hart, where Carter Hart's stats don't really fit into how Carter Hart plays. Exactly, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, because okay. like, the team, the team's got to – your save percentage is not going to be fantastic when your team leaves seven people wide open in the slot. Well, like, yeah. like you can't really do anything about and I, I've said but. this on my own podcast and I've said it on numerous podcasts that I've been on. You are only as you are only a good goaltender as you are as the guys in front of you. Yeah, it's similar to a quarterback in football. You can't do it all yourself if you have a crap team in front of you unless it, it's the second coming. Unless if you're Tom Brady who likes to retire Tom every Brady. season. Or if you're Andre Vasilevsky or Ilya Sir- or not Ilya, uh, Sisterkin in the NHL this year, so uh, <laughs> you can have the Rangers fall asleep on defense for an entire game, and they'll still find a way to uh, win that game this year. But no, I agree. I think Sandstrom's confidence is at an even all-time high compared to how high he was last year at the end of last season when he was just on that ridiculous run. Um, in the end of the season last season in the COVID year, um. Uh, it's a huge thing because he, I was sad at first because I remember he was originally going to go back overseas and then we were able to convince him to actually sign where when that was going to happen, I was sad about it because I'm like, I think this guy has something. And then it was like weird because quickly thereafter it was like, oh no, actually we're keeping him. And I'm like, 
oh, perfect. Why did you have to piss me off for three days? Like, 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 um, like, and then, like that was all, that was my reaction back then to that. I'm like, why did you have to get me all concerned for three days? But I, I agree with this move. Thank you. Like, but that duo, I think, is going to be terrific if we do, for whatever reason, unless if it's Ivan Fedotov, then that's a reason. But if we do, for whatever reason, not have Sandstrom as the backup next year, I do think that duo was a duo I was looking really forward to watching this year, that they have a chance to be one of the better in the AHL if they do have a chance to actually play together next year, which I think my closing thought would be that's really going to depend on what Ivan Fedotov wants to do, not just because he's 100% ready for the NHL at this point, but we know what's going on in Russia right now. Does he want to come over here and leave his family in Russia right now, or is he going to be able to bring his family to the States and get all the visa, the paperwork and everything that has to be done for that. And then get them over here. So like that, that's the biggest thing for me when it comes to how our goaltending plays out for next year. Mm-hmm. But Sam, I do really thank you for uh, joining. We actually had a good length on this when we went 50, a little over 50 minutes. So we talked about a lot of uh, different stuff. So I really appreciate you for joining. If you have anywhere, of course, flyers nitty gritty, but any other places, uh, you want to have people find you and share out your canes and uh, other podcasts, you can do that now. Yeah. Uh, find me on Twitter at Samantha Wismer. I also have a uh, podcast with my, my two friends, John and Pat. Uh, it's called the Pucking Flyers podcast. Really should be with an F, but it's with a P. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I just recorded my first episode of my Hurricanes, my Carolina Hurricanes podcast called Superstorm with my friend Shannon. So um it, yeah just follow us on twitter now is your friend shannon from that like obviously you lying she's went from, there we love rob Brindamore. she had like a diehard hurricanes fan or, she's a diehard hurricanes fan and she lives in the heart of raleigh okay so yeah that's a that's a perfect combination because you're somebody that loved every team and then really attached like brenda moore alex lyon uh, and then she's the diehard Hurricanes fan. Yeah, that seems like a perfect dynamic for sure. Yeah. Also, Storm Surge is definitely a cool name for the Hurricanes. So. So, super Storm, but yeah. <laughs> oh, Super Storm. Okay, yeah. But it's, it's, um, but, we, we focus on the Hurricanes, and then we um, we do a segment on the Wolves as well, the, their AHL team. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. But – um. Yeah, definitely uh, check out all those, everybody. For me, you can find me at JJBoard26 on Twitter is the thing I check the most. Um, and then you can also find me on Flyers Nitty Gritty, Steel Flyers, and uh, the Sports Fanatic News YouTube page. Please continue to subscribe down below, up above the ECU's widget to keep us growing, and subscribe to all the wonderful podcasts that Sam has and the rest of the Nitty Gritty family have, like Getting Gritty With It, that Yarif does also on YouTube. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe, and enjoy the rest of the hockey season.